Hello, my name is Steve Curry, and I'm president of Radial Engines Limited. For the past 30 years, there's been an unprecedented revival of interest in antique aircraft, and hardly a day passes without new restorations being finished. At the same time as this upsurge of interest in these beautiful craft, there's been a decrease in the information needed to maintain them. Schools that previously taught fabric covering, aircraft woodwork, and radial engine overhaul are now focusing on composites and turbine engine design. Today you can get an A&P license with ever, without ever having learned anything about the aircraft technology of the 1920s, 30s, and 40s. We often receive calls from aircraft owners and their mechanics request, requesting basic information about how to maintain their engines. The video that you're now watching was created to fill the gap between the somewhat sketchy information found in the original manufacturer's maintenance literature and what needs to be done to safely maintain those engines today. This video, which is the first in a series of maintenance videos, will focus on the Jacobs R755 and R915 series of engines that were produced from the mid-1930s to the mid-1950s. These engines powered many of the uh, aircraft produced by Waco, a goodly number of the Beach Stagger Wings, nearly all of the Cessna Bamboo Bombers, a few of the Boeing Stearman Cadets, and all of the Cessna 195s. We've divided the information into sections that will address such issues as the 25-hour inspection, avoiding liquid locks, uh, cylinder replacement, breaking in your new engine, uh, ignition systems, and modifying the original manufacturer's tools so that they work in the real world, and so forth. Uh, the information that we give here is not intended to replace the data found in the operator's manual or the overhaul manual, uh, but rather to amplify and to flesh out the uh, somewhat sketchy data that was uh, originally given. Uh, our hope is that the details that uh, were probably obvious 70 or 80 years ago uh, will now become obvious again as we discuss this somewhat lost art. Uh, as a result of this, you'll need at least yeah, an operator's manual to follow along and do the maintenance that we discuss. If you don't have an operator's manual, you can contact us here at Radial Engines Limited at area code 405-433-2263. We do stock a uh, complete library of um, reprints of the original maintenance uh, literature. Now let's go out into the shop and look at some of the basic differences in these Jacobs engine models. Before we go out and, um, and look at some of the more common Jacobs aircraft engine models that uh, you'll see out there, um, I wanted to show you this. This is one of our uh, prized possessions around here. This is a Jacobs B1 engine of 1927. Uh, we found it in a scrapyard several years ago and rescued it from the scrapper. But uh, this little engine weighs 60 pounds. It produced uh, 30 horsepower at uh, 3,000 RPM. And uh, according to the data plate, this engine was built by the Jacobs Aircraft Engine Company, Camden, New Jersey. Now we know that uh, Jacobs was only in Camden, New Jersey for one year during their first year of production before they moved to Pottstown, Pennsylvania where they did um, all of the uh, large number production that they did. The data plate also indicates that this engine is Jacobs engine serial number four. So this was the fourth engine that they ever built. This is the oldest known existing Jacobs engine. Here we have a Jacobs R755B2 engine. It's the, uh, the 275, 275 horsepower engine, uh, the most popular and probably the most reliable of any of the engines that, uh, that Jacobs built. Uh, we'll look at it as we discuss some of the differences and the similarities uh, of the various uh, Jacobs engine models. The, um, the first of the Jacobs radial engines were the LA-1 and LA-2 engines produced in small quantities from 1929 through 1933. 
uh, the LA-1 produced 170 horsepower and the LA-2 195 horsepower. Uh, they were both seven-cylinder engines and, and looked very similar to the R755s. In, um, in 1931, Jacobs built a three-cylinder engine, uh, 55 horsepower, and uh, it found some success uh, powering the uh, Spartan C2 aircraft. All of these engines, the LA-1, the LA-2, the Jacobs L3, were not uh, produced in, in large quantities. And it wasn't until 1934 when Jacobs introduced the L4 engine that Jacobs Aircraft Engine Company really became a contender as an aircraft manufacturer. Uh, during the 1930s, Jacobs produced three models of engines that became very popular. The L4, the L5, and the L6. All of these engines were originally equipped with manually greased rocker arms, uh, so you needed to grease the rocker arms before you went flying. Rather than the more modern Jacobs engines, which have pressure oil feeding up through the uh, push rod into the rocker arm to lubricate the valve overheads, the manually greased rocker arm engines had a greaser on the uh, end of each rocker shaft. So you had to go out with a grease gun and actually pump grease into the rocker boxes. So there was no oil in the rocker boxes at all. It was, it was only grease. Um, today there are not very many manually greased rocker arm engines, not Jacobs, manually greased rocker arm engines flying. Uh, most of the aircraft from the 1930s that were originally equipped with uh, the so-called greaser engines have been converted to the automatic valve lubrication uh, engines. Now the, um, uh, the L4 produced 245 horsepower. Uh, displacement was 757 cubic inches and uh, the nomenclature for that engine was the R755. The L5 engine was a 285 horsepower engine, uh, 831 cubic inch displacement, and became the R830. Uh, the L6 engine was a 330 horsepower engine, 914 cubic inch displacement, the R915. You'll not see many, if any, of the Jacobs L5 engines still being used. Uh, but you'll see many of the L6s. And uh, so what we want to do is we want to look at the differences between the R755, or original L4 engines, and the L6 engine. Um, naturally, if the engine that you're looking at has a data plate, the easiest way to tell is just by reading the data plate, because it will be stamped with the... Uh, the engine model on it. Unfortunately, if your engine's been sitting around for any length of time, uh, souvenir hunters often pop the data plates off. So it's important to be able to look and see the differences between the various engine models. With the, uh, with the Jacobs engines, there's not a lot of external differences, so that, that the L4, the L5, the L6 all look very similar from the outside. So what we want to look at is some of the details that will help us to differentiate between the engine models so you'll be able to identify your engine model if you don't have a data plate. And probably the easiest way for us to do that is to look at the cylinders. So let's go over to the bench and look at an L4 cylinder and an L6 cylinder. All right, here we have an R755 and an R915 or an L4 and an L6 cylinder sitting side by side. Uh, you'll notice just right off that the L6 cylinder is physically a larger cylinder. It's, uh, it's taller in the cylinder base than the 755. Uh, it also is one quarter of an inch larger in bore than the 755. This is a, a five and a half inch bore compared to a five and a quarter inch bore. May not sound like a lot, uh, but physically, when you have to pull the propeller through, um, there is, uh, it takes quite a bit more force to pull the L6 engine through than the 755. The easiest way to differentiate between the L6 and the uh, L4 engines when, um, when looking at them externally is you'll notice that the 755 engine uses a 4-bolt exhaust flange, which will use an exhaust gasket 
between the, um, the four studs and the exhaust system. The L6 engine, on the other hand, has an exhaust extension which protrudes out of the cylinder and just a single bolt that secures the, um, the exhaust system to the cylinder. Also, the 755 on the intake side, it has holes drilled into the cylinder um, and uh, cap screws hold the intake flange on whereas with the L6, studs protrude from the cylinder and there will be nuts on the, uh, on the intake flange. So that's the easiest way to differentiate between the L4 and the L6. Now, as I said uh, before, I don't think you'll see many L5 engines out there. Uh, if you see an L5 cylinder, it will look very, very similar to the L6 cylinder, but in this area, in the, the cylinder uh, skirt area, the L5 cylinder is shorter. So that's the easiest way to differentiate between these two engine models. During World War II, many improvements came to radial engines. Probably the most dramatic improvement as far as the Jacobs engines were concerned was the issue we discussed earlier about automatic valve lubrication. No longer was it necessary to grease the rocker arms before each flight, but the, um, the engine would automatically lubricate its own rocker arms. Um, the engine that was produced by Jacobs uh, during the war in the largest quantities was the R755-9 engine for the UC-78 Bamboo Bomber. Uh, multiplied tens of thousands of those engines were built uh, for the thousands of bamboo bombers that were built. Uh, Jacobs also built uh, many thousand L6 MB engines uh, designated as the R755 or, or the R915 uh, engine. Now one thing we should probably discuss is this uh, the suffixes. Um, the, the engines all have the prefix of R for radial and then the, the next number is the engine displacement rounded up or down to the, to the nearest five uh, cubic inches. The suffix at the end denotes uh, the type of ignition. So in other words, the L4MB engine was an L4 engine with magneto and battery ignition. So it had a magneto on the left hand side and a battery distributor on the right hand side. The L4M engine was an, uh, an L4 engine that had dual magnetos. Uh, likewise with the L6 engine, the L6MB had magneto on the left side and a battery distributor on the right side, whereas the L6M engine was dual magneto. We'll take a look at the back side of an engine and, uh, and I think this will become clearer. All right, here we have the accessory section of an R755B2M engine. You'll notice that we have a right-hand magneto and a left-hand magneto. So it's an R755B2M. Now, if we were to, to unbolt this magneto, the right-hand magneto, and substitute in its place this accessory drive housing, this engine would no longer be an R755B2M, but it would be an R755B2. So this has the, uh, the battery ignition, the distributor, and then it has two drives here. This drive is the one that is normally used for the propeller governor, and this is the drive that is used for the vacuum pump. So this, uh, substituting this drive, this accessory drive housing, um, allows us to not only have the battery ignition, which is an automatic advance uh, mechanism, it also gives us the location for the prop governor and for the vacuum pump. Now, if you're running a wood prop, it's really not necessary to have the location uh, for, the, uh, for the prop governor um, available. And so with many of the aircraft that are running a wood prop, you'll see them with the dual magneto setup. At the end of World War II, 
uh, Jacobs joined the other aircraft and engine manufacturers in um, bringing out their new items for the much anticipated uh, post-war aviation boom. Now we all know that this boom never materialized but nevertheless there were many improvements that, uh, that many of the manufacturers uh, developed during that time. Jacobs primary contribution was the 300 horse R755A2 engine which they designed and used on the Cessna 195. This is a, um, a Jacobs A2 case, R755A2 300 horsepower case. The case was the primary uh, difference uh, along with the pistons uh, between the R755-9 military 245 horse engine and the R755A2 300 horse engine. I'll show you the, the, um, the case, the primary differences in the case were in the induction housing. Uh, Jacobs increased the inside diameter of the induction housing. As a result, this engine breathed better than the, uh, than the 245 horse engine. So there was better airflow through the induction housing so that uh, more horsepower could be produced. The other factor was they increased the compression ratio from 5.4 to 1 with the 245 horse engine up to 6 to 1 on the uh, A2 engine. Now I've taken a 300 horse piston and a 245 horse uh, piston and I've joined them together with a piston pin in the middle so that we can compare them. And you'll see that the, the uh, 300 horse piston, which is the 4276 piston, is actually about 90 thousandths taller than the uh, 245 horse piston. It's also longer in the skirt. So you can see that, uh, that this piston is, is both taller at the top and longer at the bottom. What that does is it helps the piston not to rock in the cylinder as much as the old 245 horse did. Um, this, uh, the combination of the, impressed com or the increased compression ratio and the increased ability to flow uh, the air-fuel mixture resulted in a horsepower increase uh, up to 300 horsepower. Now this was a very successful engine and um, uh, from the end of World War II into the early 50s this was the engine of choice uh, for the Cessna 195. Now we come to the year 1952 and Jacobs found themselves in, uh, in somewhat of a dilemma. They, uh, they were selling the A2 engines right along, they were doing very well, but the uh, R755-9 engines, the old military 245s, weren't selling at all. And they had multiplied thousands of them uh, left over from World War II, some new uh, some in uh, military overhauled condition. So the engineers at Jacobs um, began to, to think about what they might be able to do with these 245 horse engines. And the idea that someone had was what if we took the 245 horse um, power section and we put the higher compression 300 horse piston in it. It wouldn't breathe quite as, as good as the, as the 300 horse, but what would we have? And lo and behold, the 275 was born, the R755 B2 engine, which as I mentioned earlier, really has become the most popular of the Jacobs engines. Uh, it uses many, many parts interchangeable with the 245 horse engine. In fact, every R755 B2 275 horse engine is a converted L4MB uh, military 245 horse dash 9 engine. Um, the uh, parts manual even describes the, uh, the, the uh, serial numbers of 245 horse engines that are eligible to be converted to the, the 275s. And so with the um, uh, with the higher compression ratio and the 245 horse, we got the 275 that we uh, have today. Now, uh, in, in trying to differentiate between the, the 275 and the 300, 
uh, it is almost impossible externally. Uh, the engines um, look very, very much alike. About the only difference that you'll be able to tell is this boss, the mounting boss for the uh, 300 horse engine. We can measure this. And we find that that's um, a little over two and a half inches. On the uh, 275 and 245 engine, that's only an inch and a half. So this, the 300 horse boss is actually an inch longer than the, uh, the 245 and 275. So that's, the, um, about, that's about the only external way, other than a data plate, to determine which engine you're looking at. One other thing we should probably discuss while, uh, while we have this case here is uh, case materials. With the, um, uh, the 245 horse engine, you will find that the front half of the power case from, from this um, dividing line forward uh, is always aluminum. And the rear half of the power case is always magnesium. Now we'll have some things to say about that a little bit later and some uh, interesting problems that you run into because of the dissimilar metals. With the 300 horse cases, the original 300 horse cases were built the same way with an aluminum front half and a magnesium rear half. However, uh, some of the later 300 horse cases were all aluminum. This case just happens to be an all aluminum case. The, uh, the 330 horse L6 engines are also all aluminum cased engines. So it's just a little, um, a little differentiation, a little uh, uh, thing that, uh, that you may want to notice.